Dr. van Hogeveis from Lipoid Scientific Department in Ludwigshafen to talk about mixed micelles, an underestimated nanoformulation for uh, parenteral delivery of poorly water soluble drugs. Hello, yeah, thank you very much for a um, kind introduction. And thank you for inviting me for giving this seminar on uh, mixed micelles. <clears throat> I selected this topic because uh, I think, referring to the preceding seminar, uh, development departments always looking for simple solutions, and simple solutions uh, are uh, desperately needed because uh, most of the new chemical entities in pipelines or pharmaceutical industries are lipophilic and have very low water solubility. So there is a tremendous need for solubilization of vehicles and formulations. And mixed micelles are clearly belonging to nanotechnology. And I thought I would like to remind you to a very old uh, technology developed by Hoffman La Roche uh, some, some 40 years ago. So this was actually uh, also an, an, an approved nano product, you could say many, many uh, decades ago. And um, yeah, I will, would like to highlight then, especially in that respect, uh, the use of uh, phospholipids, which are an essential component in these uh, mixed micelles. <coughs> oh. So phospholipids uh, can, uh, are basically a very multi-purpose excipients. You can use them for any administration route. Uh, like oral, parenteral, topical, and pulmonary. The technical use is mainly as lubilizers, emulsifier, and oil and water emulsions for parental use, especially, and uh, as a surfactant and as wetting agents. Uh, you can then, uh, using these uh, excipients, prepare many types of uh, dosage forms, like uh, oil and water emulsions or water and oil at which uh, liposomes, as uh, in the preceding uh, seminar highlighted, uh, in, in the production possibilities of these type of dosage forms, and mixed micelles, the topic of my seminar of today, and uh, dispersions of water insoluble compounds. They are body-owned components, so they are, have no uh, uh, toxicity, and uh, the, for that reason, they are at the moment basically benchmark nanomaterial because they have no problems in uh, the toxicity testing and uh, they are completely biocompatible in principle. Uh, the main sources of phospholipids are a vegetable source, animal and synthetic. Uh, for vegetable soils, we have uh, phospholipids coming from soybeans mainly Rapeseed, sunflower, wheat germ, and flaxseed. The flaxseed, the wheat germ are more exotic. Uh, and animal source are mainly uh, from egg yolk, and also you could uh, isolate phospholipids from milk or bovine brain. This was an issue of uh, 40 years ago because phospholipid serine, PS, the abbreviation for phospholipid serine, could be um, uh, isolated from bovine brain, but because of the advent of uh, BSE, this is not, not an issue, of course, anymore. Synthetic phospholipids are also uh, popular, especially in uh, liposomal uh, dosage forms. Uh, there are also natural phospholipids, like soybean phospholipids are being used. Uh, here you have a table on uh, the use of either natural or synthetic phospholipids. Uh, in the in, in pharmaceutical industry, so you have synthetic phospholipids. You can see here what sort of uh, administration route and what sort of uh, dosage forms they are being used. And as you can see from this table, uh, synthetic phospholipids are only being used in liposomes and sometimes in suspensions and sometimes in pulmonary use, for pulmonary use, but the main use uh, in pharmaceutical industry is uh, given by natural uh, phospholipids coming from egg, soy, and hydrogenated forms of these natural uh, uh, phospholipids. Reason is that uh, the availability of natural phospholipids is much higher than from synthetic phospholipids, so also the costs are much lower, the cost of goods 
and also the availability for new products you would like to develop is, is, uh, is not, not an issue, whereas for synthetic phospholipids, the production capacity worldwide for these synthetic phospholipids is rather limited. <coughs> So here we have the most popular parental delivery vehicles based on uh, phospholipids. They are lipid emulsions, oil and water emulsions, the particle size is about 200 nanometers. The mixed micelles of 5 to 10 nanometers and liposomes uh, which could range from 20 to uh, nanometers to 10 microns. <coughs> So the topic is mixed micelles uh, and uh, the properties and the benefits of these mixed micelles uh, developed by uh, Roche uh, for diazepam uh, 40 years ago and also for their product vitamin K which also allowed uh, uh, oral administration of these uh, poorly water soluble compounds diazepam and vitamin K are both lipophilic and uh, they were developed in order to replace organic solvents to solubilize these poorly water soluble uh, drugs. They comprise these mixed micelles, approximately an equimolar mixture of phospholipid and, and bile salt. The bile salt in itself is a very strong detergent and could give rise to hemolysis. Uh, the, basically, the mixed micelles, uh, you can find them in nature. In the duodenum, you find them as a natural solubilization vehicle in the bile. So you could also consider these vehicles for enhancement of uh, oral bioavailability of poorly water-soluble compounds. So it is basically ideal for someone developing uh, drugs or products in, in development that you have with one vehicle, you could basically cover all administration rounds, so that it's, uh, it's extremely attractive. So the lecithin of the phospholipid, uh, the SPC, is abbreviation soy bean phospholipidoline, is added to overcome the hemolytic effect of the bile salt. And as a result, the mixed fire cells, being a natural solubilization system, are not hem hemolytic and have a low toxicity. The main lipid of choice for these uh, uh, commercial products using these mixed micelles is uh, soybean phosphodetagonine with a purity, purity of at least of 94% of uh, phosphodetagonine. <coughs> the composition of the mixed micelles is uh, as follows. Uh, it of course contains a lipophilic API, a soybean, PC, and bile salt, glycolic acid or deoxycholic glycolic acid, sodium oxide or hydrochloric acid for adjustment of the pH, an isotonizing agent when required for plant administration and water for injection. The safety of mixed micelles themselves, so without any drug, is, has been published by Hofmann La Roche. There's a very, very rare event that a company decided to, at that time, to publish the uh, toxicity data of a vehicle, basically of a technology. You can't, you can't find that with any uh, liposomal product or basically not a single technology. Uh, you can find published toxicity data. And so that's why these mixed mice are extremely uh, attractive for development people because you can always refer to this uh, literature, which is uh, uh, done by the toxicology department of Hoffman and Roche at that time. The preparation of mixed micelles is um, uh, that, that you have to adapt the ratio of, of lipid to drug, uh, of the lip, lipid to, uh, sorry, to uh, bile salt in such a way that your drug dissolves maximally. Uh, the ratio of the phospholipid bile salts is such a way that the overall product is not hemolytic. And uh, the SPC soybean uh, phospholipid and sodium glycoclate are the preferred components. And if your drug is not stable enough, you could also lyophilize the final product. The principle of preparing the mixed micelles is uh, as, as follows. Um, I was thinking why when this technology is so attractive and 70% of the NCEs are lipophilic, why is no one actually using this technology? At least I'm not aware of it. So maybe the people of pharmaceutical industries are using it, but I don't see any publication or whatever in that direction. The re one of the reasons could be a very silly one, because if you prepare use, uh, ready for use, mix my cells, <coughs> 
then there are very mild detergents. And if you try to dissolve a lipophilic drug in this very mild detergent mixture, they hardly dissolves, and you have to wait uh, weeks or months before it dissolves. So there are a few tricks uh, to use first a highly concentrated bile salt solution, which you can overcome the crystal lattice energy of the compound. Then you dissolve the drug in this highly concentrated bile salt solution. Then you add the lecithin or the phospholipid to it, so to form the mixed micelles. Another trick is that you make a very hot concentrated mixed micelle solution up to 60, 70 percent. You can dissolve uh, of the phospholipid and the and the bile salt in water in order to the, uh, dissolve then the drug in a much easier way and then dilute the mixed micelles to the desired concentration. Here you can find the products which are on the market. It's basically in, uh, uh, products from uh, Van Roche and also from Baxter on uh, cocktails of vitamins. And here you can find the exact composition. It's basically the uh, uh, reflecting the, the general description I gave before. This is a uh, uh, vitamin mixture, and this is the vitamin K formulation of uh, Roche, which is also being used orally. And um, you can also find some literature on preclinical pre research with uh, mixed myocells, so they're not completely forgotten. And to conclude uh, my story that uh, these mixed micelles, I think they deserve to be more considered, especially if you have uh, poorly soluble compounds, because the excipients are used worldwide in marketed products. They're suitable for many administration routes. The, the phospholipids are available. The excipients are non-toxic. And they uh, are uh, uh, really acting as an um, excellent uh, alternative to uh, formulations with synthetic uh, detergents. And the excipients, uh, all of them are parental quality. The mixed micelles are safe and non hemolytic. Also, pediatric use is possible. It's also very important for development. And these mixed micelles, uh, being a simple technology compared to uh, liposomes, uh, can produce as large scale. And when needed, when the drug is not stable, you can be freeze dried. So I hope I raise your attention to the technology, and I would strongly recommend to consider that in case you have a solubilization issue with your poorly water soluble compound. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Peter. We have uh, time for one or two questions. May I ask one question? So, what do you think is the, um, let's see, is this now free technology or is it still covered by the uh, Roche patents? No, these, <coughs> these patents are all uh, expired, and besides that, they were limited to, to the ASAPM. Oh. So, the technology itself is known for over 50, 60 years already, but they made a patent on the specific combination of benzodiazepines and these mix my cells. So uh, this is uh, expired since, uh, since uh, 20 years. Mm -hmm. So there are no IP limitations anymore. Okay. Any last question?